We have a new Ghostbusters movie coming out soon, and that means new Ghostbuster toys on toy shelves. Anyone that has watched this channel for a while knows I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan, and I was over the moon with all of the Ghostbusters merchandise that we got for Ghostbusters Afterlife. And the fact that the movie did well enough for us to get a sequel or a four or Quill had me excited not only for more adventures with our favorite Ghostbusters as well as the new cast that we got introduced to in Ghostbusters Afterlife, but that we would have the potential for more toys. Now we haven't gotten any official announcement from Hasbro on how much we're getting or when it's supposed to officially hit toy shelves, but a bunch of targets across the US started putting out Ghostbusters figures over the past week or so. Unfortunately, it hasn't been a huge rollout like we saw with Tim and T Mutant Mayhem. With different targets putting out different Ghostbusters toys here and there, I gotta give a big thanks to Pat from Video Power Games Gaming, who found a lot of the Ghostbusters toys that I will be reviewing on the channel in the next week or so. Before we open these things up, I gotta give a lot of praise to the new box art for this toy line. While there's a lot of reuse in the figures, the packaging is wholly new and I think it looks absolutely fantastic. I love the fact that the different companion ghost colors are represented on the different box with different slime colors going across the top and the bottom of the boxes. It looks really freaking cool. Unlike Ghostbusters Afterlife that relied more on the Ecto-1 as its design inspiration for the packaging, the Ghostbusters Frozen Empire figures lean more on the firehouse and the Ecto containment unit to frame the look of the packaging, and I think it turned out really, really nice. Another thing I really love is that we have a Tobin spirit guide that talks about the different companion ghosts that you get. It also shows you which class of ghosts that you're receiving in the package. I think it's a ton of fun. In a world where we don't really get cross-sell on modern toys anymore, I really like this addition. We also have two information boxes that show how you can use the new Ecto stretch feature from your companion ghosts over your Ghostbusters figures. All right, enough yammering. Let's open these things up. One of the main things I like about the new packaging compared to the old packaging is this is more collector friendly. I'm pretty sure I could just cut this tape and pull the figure out and put it back in if I need to. This is your more classic bubble. Once you open it, that's it. I do love this insert that has the frozen firehouse uh, in the background. I think it looks really freaking cool. All right, I got all of the Ghostbusters open up. And if you had the Afterlife figures, you kind of know what to expect here um, as far as the figures and the Proton Packs go. Now, both Callie and Phoebe Spangler use the Lucky body from Ghostbusters Afterlife. The main difference is being Lucky has a black belt and both Callie and Phoebe Spangler have the gray belt. They also have Spangler name tags and Lucky didn't have a name tag on her suit. The Trevor figures are nearly identical. The main difference being the paint is slightly different and the new Frozen Empire Trevor has a Spangler name tag where his Afterlife version did not. So you could get away with not getting another Trevor figure, but, but there is a slight enough difference that, I don't know, a crazy person like me would still want to have the Frozen Empire version of this Trevor. And then old Gary Gruberson, he utilizes the classic 84 Ghostbusters body. The main difference is being, of course, a different head sculpt. The undershirt is painted black, whereas the classic 84 Ghostbusters did not have that painted in black. And he has a Gruberson uh, name patch, which is a lot of fun. Uh, the proton packs are identical to what we got with in the Afterlife figures. Uh, there's really nothing that would separate the two if you had them side by side like I am right now. I can't really see any any significant difference between the two accessories. I think all of their likenesses look pretty good. The only one I do have a little bit of trouble with is the Phoebe Spangler. I think the Phoebe Spangler from the Afterlife toy line was freaking awesome. I loved her red shoes. Now, of course, she's grown up, so I totally get that she would have a different figure uh, versus the one that we got with Ghostbusters Afterlife. It's just something about the head sculpt, the hair, the neck looks a little too long, um, but I think the Phoebe figure that we got with Afterlife is a lot more fun and connects more to the character. Now the big difference between the previous toy lines and this new one are the companion ghosts, and I gotta say, without even trying their Ecto Tech Stretch feature, I love the colors, they really pop, um, and I think, you know, they definitely understood the assignment with these companion ghosts. We've got a Slimer figure, we've got Bonesy, who goes with Phoebe, definitely seems like it's inspired by the bad to the the bone ghost that we had in the original Kenner RGB line. And then we've got Pukey, who, you know, clearly is puking out something. Uh, he looks really gross. He comes with Gruberson. Um, and then we have Possessor, uh, who comes with Callie. Uh, it looks kind of like either just a gross trash bag or a gross onion or something like that. Uh, but I love the colors. I love the designs. But let's see how the actual feature works on the figure. Um, so I'm going to try out Trevor here. And... While it does stretch over the figure, you can't see through it. 
Um, and in the original images, I thought that was a ton of fun if it could look like it was, you know, sliming the figure. And it doesn't really do that. So that's a little bit of a bummer. I don't know how you would have made that work. Let me try some of the other companion ghosts to see if maybe it's just Slimer that doesn't uh, kind of go translucent. So maybe that was something that they had on the original design, um, but it does not seem to work um, on the actual figures. Let's try Pukey out. I guess if you pull it enough, at least with Pukey, you can start to see uh, Gruberson's face. Um, so let me try that again with Callie. Let's try and stretch out Pukey. You can kind of see Callie there, but you really have to stretch him out. And I would worry about like ripping um, the companion ghost, but maybe that's the ecto technology uh, is that it won't rip. Um, uh, it's tougher with the other ones. I think Pukey works the best in terms of uh, being able to see uh, through the rubber like it's actually being slimed. So while the sliming effect doesn't work too great, I still really dig these companion ghosts. Uh, the, all, this sculpt looks like a lot of fun. Again, I love the colors. They really, really pop. And if there's one critique I would give with Hasbro's handling of the Ghostbusters line since Afterlife is that we haven't got enough ghosts to bust. Uh, and you know, I know we got companion ghosts with the Fright Features figures last time. Um, so of course we're getting some more companion ghosts here. Do I wish we had more just standalone ghost figures? Absolutely. Um, but I do think these companion ghosts that we got with the figures look really, really fun. Uh, if you remember last time, the proton packs attach in exactly the same manner. And just like the last proton packs, the Neutrona Wand's handle is too soft to kind of stay upright. It bends at, when you attach it in the movie accurate way. It's not the end of the world. I haven't had any issues with my Afterlife ones over the past couple years. Um, but in general, I think the figures look better uh, holding their Neutrona Wand. And since they're using the same sculpts that we got in the Afterlife Fright Features toy line, all of these figures scale with your original Kenner vehicles and play sets and also have the classic Kenner size foot peg holes uh, so they can work with any of the foot pegs that are on the original RGB Kenner vehicles and play sets. So now that I've opened the human figures that we've gotten so far in the Frozen Empire Ghostbusters toy line, I gotta say that I'm really pumped that they continue to use that figure style that we got in Afterlife and I do really enjoy the companion ghost even if it doesn't work as well as advertised on the packaging. My grade for these figures would go up a whole nother level if we continue to fill out the roster that includes Lucky, Podcast, as well as the OG Ghostbusters would also be awesome to get Janine in there as well. Who knows what is going to happen with this toy line in the future. I'm thankful we got this wave, but my true opinion of this rollout for Frozen Empire will be what other figures they release to support the film. All of that being said, I absolutely love these figures and they get the Geek Dad Life by rating. Even though there's a lot of sculpts reuse, I do like the new head sculpts. We've gotten some new characters that we didn't get with the other toy line. Definitely hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. I intend to review all of the main releases for Frozen Empire. So definitely stay tuned for those future videos. And until next time, hasta luego and goodbye.